My name's Herb Raymond Schneider. We're going to deal with the subject of prostate cancer. These are very significant numbers. It's the most common malignancy in men. PSA is the most sensitive and widely available test. PCA3, not PSA, PCA3, stands for prostate cancer antigen 3. There is genetic material and that gene results in a certain amount of protein being produced and that protein can be identified in the urine and that's what PCA3 is. So what can we say? The PCA is 25 or less. The probability of you having cancer is extremely low. Now if you take PSA which is high in its sensitivity and you do a PCA3 and we put those two together we can say that this gives us the best opportunity to have an accurate prediction of significant prostate cancer. This is the perineum and in the rectum is this ultrasound probe that generates an image that we can see on a monitor. This patient has uh, prostate cancer. This is the map that we've gotten from our biopsy and the green says this is probably an insignificant cancer. This one might be a little different. There's no doubt here we have an aggressive lesion and most of the time that's a bigger lesion. This is a whole mount biopsy. Here is a small lesion and in that small lesion we look at the cell composition and it's fairly benign. If you want to call it insignificant, you can do that. Here it's bigger and it's a little worrisome on size alone, but the histology in that lesion, in other words the cellular makeup, that looked pretty benign too. But this is a larger lesion and we have a name for that. We call it the index cancer. In this lesion they are a different group of cells. We think the significant aspect of the malignancy is right here and the cells that are going to be troublesome cells that may even spread outside the confines of the prostate to other areas in the body will have the same genomic identifiers as cells here but not here or there. I'd like now to introduce Dr. Vikram Christensetti. So we're looking at MRI imaging of the of prostate cancer. There's been a growing trend towards MRI of the prostate. We are doing these prostate MRIs on a three Tesla magnet. That refers to the primary magnet strength of the MRI machine. This allows for high resolution images, new software that allows to do what is termed multi-parametric. The main two are diffusion weighted imaging and dynamic contrast enhanced imaging. Breast cancer is a very common cancer among women. Prostate cancer is the male equivalent. What we do now is we have targeted biopsies, we have targeted therapies, uh, and this has improved patient outcome. Years ago, the mainstay for breast cancer therapy was radical modified mastectomy. And now we've gone to lumpectomies and localized treatment. And I think this is kind of where prostate cancer is going as well. Today, whole gland radical prostatectomy is kind of the mainstay of therapy. Focal treatment is, I think, the future of prostate therapy, and that's where prostate MRI comes in. Sometimes we do prostate uh, MRI as well before we do the biopsy itself to maybe target that biopsy and help us for treatment planning. So the basic principles of MRI is based on nuclear magnetic, magnetic resonance, a technique that's used to acquire information about the molecules in your body. Sometime during this examination you will get contrast injected and will be obtaining MRI images during and after the contrast is administered. There's a primary magnet. That's what you hear when you say there's a three Tesla MRI. Basically that allows the computer to interpret the data and creates an image that displays the, the characteristics of different tissues. T1 weighted images is a primarily fat sensitive sequence. T2 weighting, it looks at water. Diffusion weighted imaging allows for mapping of diffusion molecules. The prostate gland is not just all the same all throughout. Approximately 70% of the prostate cancers are in the peripheral zone. Approximately 20% is in the tra uh, transitional zone and less than 10% is in the central zone. And this is where the zonal anatomy becomes very important is that the different zones of the prostate look different to us on these MRI images. On T2 weighted imaging the tumor appears dark. That's what allows us to see these cancers on MR. We also look at the prostate capsule and we can see if these cancers abut them, 
uh, or go through them. The MR findings of the prostate because these aren't really based on just the anatomy. This is more based on the tissue composition of prostate cancer. Diffusion weighted imaging, this shows a bright dynamic contrast enhanced imaging. Prostate cancer contrast comes into the tissue quicker and so it enhances, it comes into the cancer more than the surrounding tissue and it also washes out quicker too. See right here is that bright spot right there and that's that tumor enhancing. It. This same lesion here shows up dark here and bright here. So put it together and this says that this is likely a focal area of prostate cancer. In my report I'll put in where I think this prostate cancer is too, which is very important. I can target them to a certain area for therapy. This is kind of prostate MRI in a nutshell. We're moving towards the world where we don't have to take out the entire prostate. If we don't take out the entire prostate, where is the cancer and how do we find it? And prostate MRI is a great tool to use to find these localized cancers. This is an apple and in that process of eating the apple or slicing the apple, well we found an apple with a brown spot in it. What uh, Dr. Christian said he does for us is he shows us where the bad spot in the prostate is, just like the bad spot in an apple. I'd like to introduce Dr. John George, and he is going to talk to us about HIFU. I should mention, and this is important, that uh, despite sort of worldwide acceptance, we do not have FDA approval to use HIFU therapy uh, within the United States except in uh, clinical trials but I need to mention that as a disclaimer. Early detection uh, allows patients to have a lot of good options, new way of thinking about prostate cancer. We're trying to incorporate testing, as Herb mentioned, PCA3, looking at the PSA in patients over the course of several years, uh, incorporating more advanced imaging, as Vikram talked about. Our objective as urologists is to try to balance the approach of taking a gentleman who's been diagnosed with prostate cancer and what you have to do is look at the patient, look at the characteristics of his cancer, look at his own longevity, look at the things that are important to him in his life and tailor your discussion, tailor your treatment options that you offer to this patient based on an individual uh, approach. Some of the treatment options that we have traditionally used uh, radical prostatectomy, uh, radiation therapy in one form or the, or the other. These are valid options. They're excellent options for a lot of patients. But the issue that comes into play is that for a certain type of patient, a certain stage of their disease, radical prostatectomy may be too much therapy given the fact that you may render the patient with some quality of life issues very undesirable urinary incontinence, uh, difficulty maintaining adequate erections, uh, penile shortening, a number of things. Other options that, uh, that may be highly curative but render fewer side effects are, are now available and are, are worthwhile to consider. Okay, let's talk about this HIFU therapy and what it is. The letters stand for High Intensity Focused Ultrasound and what this technology uh, is about is that you are utilizing an ultrasound probe, the, almost identical to the one Herb showed you on the slide introduced into the rectum. Now this particular probe is modified, so it has uh, excellent imaging of the prostate. You can see the prostate in all different dimensions, cross section, lengthwise section, what's known as a coronal section, and you can uh, image uh, sort of a three-dimensional uh, uh, rendering of what the prostate is. So when we have that imaging, we then have built into this ultrasound probe, there's nothing surgical, nothing else that's done other than the probe insertion. But the transducer, which is again ultrasound energy, not radioactive energy. It's viewed as a, if you will, a clean energy source but the ultrasound energy leaves the, the probe, travels through the rectal wall, and as it's traveling, the ultrasound waves converge to a focal point. And at that focal point, the temperature that's reached is between 80 and 100 degrees Celsius, which is sort of boiling 
tissue. Now, it produces this uh, focal point in a small area. It's like using a very tiny paintbrush to paint the targeted area and in so doing create tissue destruction at that site and not beyond. And that's the key point when it comes to side effects. The collateral damage is non-existent. This is a rendering of uh, how the energy uh, focuses. If you look down at this end of the screen, this is where the probe would be. And all of this sort of darker grayish purple color is very low energy. And this shows the transmission of the ultrasound eventually reaching the target and you can see a 2,000 to 1 difference between that small yellow focal point uh, compared to the energy that comes off of the transducer. So we're able to uh, not create any injury between where the transducer is out until this area and then boom, we create uh, an acoustic ablation or tissue destruction. It's not large, complicated set of equipment. This is it. It's the ultrasound probe, which we have here, no different than the ultrasound probe that we use in the office to do prostate biopsies every day. Then we have the monitoring screen that allows the surgeon to visually control what's going on, to adjust the energy level that's administered, and to make sure that we're seeing in real time that we're destroying the tissue that we're intending to destroy. This shows you how, how high food treatment progresses along. Up on the top, the, where the yellow line would indicate where the high food transducer is firing. When we're doing the high food therapy, the, the surgeon, her, myself, the urologist that's doing the treatment, watches this in real time. When we utilize these beautiful images we get with MRI, and we coordinate that with the findings that we have on biopsy, we can now define patients who could go in and have the lesion that is concerning targeted out. We can map it out with the HIFU therapy and selectively destroy the concerning tissue with a surrounding margin of apparently healthy tissue. And, uh, you know, this can be done you know, really on an outpatient basis, resume your activities the next day. We can actually take the MRI images and we can fuse them or, or attach them into the ultrasound imaging to where we get an overlay of where the MRI abnormality is onto the ultrasound and get that much more precision when we're targeting the therapy. The other usefulness for HIFU is so many patients have had radiation therapy. Over time, uh, they, they may show a, a relapse or, or a local recurrence. It's a dire situation to try to have a prostatectomy after you've had radiation. The complications are very high. We can manage them with this HIFU therapy, and if the disease is in fact localized, about 80% of them can be. Uh, put back into a complete remission. With HIFU therapy, okay, at the moment we're treating offshore. We're treating patients in these sites. Uh, we utilize uh, private hospitals. We bring our nursing staff and the physicians travel there. The experience for the patients has been uh, better than most of the experiences that patients would have at the local hospital. And we're able to work out with their insurance or they have some other uh, method of savings that allows them to pay for it. The staff that, that offers the treatment through the Charlotte office, uh, they really do bend over backwards. Patients that are interested, you know, they'll want to talk to patients that have had a HIFU treatment. A gentleman, an Englishman, his name is Mark Emberton. He said, the essential element in increasing our ability to successfully and appropriately treat prostate cancer is good imaging. Better biopsies when you need it. And tissue preserving therapy. The idea of not throwing the apple away and the less of the apple we have to treat because we've made early diagnosis, the better the patients do. 30% of the patients who are diagnosed with prostate cancer will probably go on active surveillance. 30% will at some point have focal therapy. 40% will have whole gland therapy, we're all going to benefit from having a broader scope of resource to deal with individual pro uh, problems.